sad dick. Hey everybody, welcome to Loving the Skin I'm In. As always, uh, it is our goal to promote awareness and understanding of the issues that affect the black race, but above all else, it's all love. And so with that being said, my name is Demetra K, and I'm here with the infamous Donovan throwing rocks and high in his hand, Sadiq, and we are going to bring you lots of information. So let's get started. We are going to be talking about group economics. Now, we always talk about group economics, but specifically, we're going to get a little bit more in detail. Now, recently, I saw a video where there was this um, sister. She, well, actually, it wasn't a video. It was a picture of her and her family, and she had this commentary saying, um, yeah, you know, basically, people make fun of me because I live with my parents. But she says, but what y'all don't know is, not only do I live with my parents, I live with, I think it's three of my grown kids. Mm. We live in a 7,000 square foot home. We all have, you know, nice cars. Our credit is good. Um, and we're building, investing, and building a legacy for our family. Mm-hmm. What we are doing is practicing group economics. And so the people who are laughing at me is what she's saying, is, and I'm paraphrasing, you know, what are you guys doing? You know, and, and that's a good question because we do that a lot to each other in our communities, you know. Oh, I got to have my own, you know, 500,000 square foot home. Mm. Oh, y'all 18. Y'all got to get out. Uh, oh, you got to get out. Mm. All of that stuff. And mm. so, um, so basically I wanted to get into what is group economics. Okay. So I took the liberty of getting the definition from urban revolution. They describe it as group economics. Um, while there is no formal definition, group economics can be defined as one group of people who have a common economic interest. The, that group agrees to actively and consciously pursue the economic interest together to create a sustainable and secure economy for themselves. So that means in a nutshell, and I know you guys are very smart, you can figure it out, I just want to break it down. It's like if we're working together, so me and Donovan here, let's say, you know, opposed to us having our own let's say house or whatever, he has his 10,000 square foot home and I have my 20,000 yes, square foot. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Amen. Amen, sister. We come together and say, you know what? Why do we need all this space? Mm-hmm. Why do we need to pay, you know, all of this mortgage when we can pay one mortgage, save the rest of our money, let's build a business or something and keep the money in the house and all that other stuff. So that basically is what that means. It's work together for the common goal of unity, especially in regards to black people. Now, um, this past weekend, I had the, uh, the pleasure of meeting a family. They were a Hispanic family, and uh, they were actually moving into a bigger house. It was probably maybe about seven or eight of them or more in this house. Now this they is all good, saved together. They all saved together. And so what she said, the, um, the lady, I guess she's more like the spokeswoman of the family, whatever you can call it. They have their own business. They all work from home, um, and they keep the money in the house. They live together, and so they're functioning they're practicing group economics. We're working together. We're spending the money together and we're saving and building together. And I said, wow, that is awesome. I also read a book by the name of um, the hidden secrets of oriental wealth. And I think I spoke about this once before. Now in this book, it talks about how um, Asian people, they collectively work together in mm-hmm. order to build wealth. It is that, mm-hmm. Yeah. Asian people are second behind Jewish people in regards to being the richest Mm -hmm. absolutely, because they circulate their money in their community within their community over and over and over Mm -hmm. and over again before it goes anywhere else. It said also said that it only takes them one to two generations to build wealth. Um, And Dr. Claude Anderson says that we as black people, it's going on about 18 generations now since slavery, we are still catching up. Now at one point in time, we were able to do that. Before of course integration. the uh, of, of course the Jeb uh, the Jeb uh, what's that guy he was in the World War uh, he was not World War Two Civil War the Jeb uh, he had a cavalry and he started the Ku Klux Klan oh yeah yeah and old boy came in there and just just destroyed towns and right exactly so after slavery during the Jim Crow era when mm-hmm. it was the heart for black people black we were people thriving. we were thriving we had hospitals schools churches towns banks. We were practicing group economics. Of course, we know what happened. White people came in and they hated and the rest is history. And they, they uh, created mm-hmm. right institutional systemic um, racism. And we are still yet to recover. However, a lot of that has to do with us. 
because we keep buying Thank into you. the false narrative that you ain't shit, I ain't shit, and together, uh -huh. yeah. So is a house, <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay, <laughs> exactly. And so, if I see you getting just a little bit more, yeah, I'm brother. I'm not going to his store shoe, you know, because I don't understand why he need to do this. Instead of saying, you know what, this brother got a store. Mm -hmm. He's trying to make it. If I give him my black dollars, he's able to hire more black people. And then we can, you know, do this as people. Right. Uh, let, 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 let me interject mm -hmm. real, real quick right there. I'm going to use this as an example for those that might not visualize what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It's like the uh, rap music and the record industry. Mm hmm. You know, uh, I'll start Ruthless Records, then you want to start Death Row. Exactly. Uh, you want to start Bad Boy. Right. And LaFace Records. Right. You know, instead of these, all these people coming together. Right. And having all, like Motown used to do in the 60s. You right. Have, everybody wanted to be on it Motown. It was just Motown. Motown. Right. It was yeah. just Motown. But like you said, there's all these. Uh, yeah. I mean, to the point to where there was a feud, allegedly, you know, uh, Puffy's group killed Tupac. I'm saying yeah, that's, you know, that's all it's kind alleged. of, you know. Yeah. And then Biggie was killed by the other, you know, right. by the West Coast. So it's just like all this drama, but that's an actually an excellent okay. an analogy. Mm -hmm. And so um, Dr. Claude Anderson, we talk about him a lot on here. He's a black economist and a culturalist who uh, talks about what we need to do as black people to get ahead. Mm -hmm. And so he says, or he actually asks, and he, you know, makes a statement saying, can modern Black America do what 18 previous generations failed to do or were not allowed to do. It will require Black Americans to make drastic behavioral changes. We have to change our mindset Absolutely. and the way we see each other. I mean, we just we talk about Wake behavioral up! It's it, it, it starts in the mind. Mm -hmm. It starts with how we think. And again, as I said a couple of minutes ago, how we see each other. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't always have because it's and I'm not being negative, but in the black community. No. We have that yes. crab mentality. Well, well uh, you, we see it every day, and it's 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 shown to us every mm -hmm. Atlanta housewives. Right, I gotta have a bigger house. Oh, you got a bigger house. I gotta do it. Uh, Cardi B, Nicki Minaj, all these feuds. Your booty's bigger. My booty's yeah. bigger. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and you know, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because mm -hmm. now that I'm thinking about what you're saying, mm -hmm. you see it every day. Every day, oh, day my in God. every I'm awake. aspect. I'm awake. Every aspect of our race, we see it, and I think a lot of times we're not even cognizant that right. we're doing it. Right. I mean, hell, man, you can go to Winco and mm -hmm. we'll see some form of hate mm -hmm. toward each other. Yep. You know, yep. um. And, and again, we always talk about how we think the white man's ice is colder, colder than, than ours. ours. I'd rather mm -hmm. go give my money to Woolworth. Yeah, than to go to my brother who's mm -hmm. selling the same stuff or whatever the case is. And I, um, I put up a meme the other day that says, um, yeah, I went to a black business and they messed my order up. And guess what? I'm going to keep going back until they get it yeah, right. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. We don't have that mentality. No, oh, my God. No, no. If a, if a black business messed up, our, we want to go in there and whip his ass. Yeah, or we get on <laughs> social media right. and we kill the business. business. Oh, I went and they gave me one napkin right, right. instead of two napkins. Mm -hmm. And I'd never go there again. And you should never go mm -hmm. there. But as, as we always talk about, but. You'll watch who see your ass right back in the Taco Bell after they repeatedly mess up your order. order. You'll go in the pop up any other, yeah, mm -hmm. and then it, but you'll keep going back. And mm -hmm. so we are just God, conditioned you're... to just not, to just, to, to be a crab. Yes. Instead of saying, as the meme said, well, I'm going to keep going back until you get it right. Or instead of going on social media. Did you ever think about going to talk to the business? Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, um, I really like your, your barbecue ribs. But, you know, I'd like more now because is this mm. something you can do? Can, can oh, I get okay. some more sauce on that? Yes, I'm that from is... Louisiana. Let, let me show you how to. Right. right. And, and, and we don't we don't understand when we don't when we do that. We're not practicing groupie. Games. Mm. In fact, we're practicing the opposite because what you're doing is being instrumental and in helping that business fail. Fail. Right. Instead of saying, OK, well, what can I do? Mm -hmm. What can I do to make sure that business is successful? But, you know, uh, playing the devil advocate, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. you, you know, you have these guys, you know, you might have a good business, right? Mm -hmm. And then they're making all the money and stuff like that. Then, the, of course, we have, we're humans, jealousy comes in right. there and all this other stuff. Or that guy starts cutting back. Again, uh, Robert Johnson mm -hmm. had a good, you're going to give me a billion dollars? I'm out. Right. And then the white guy takes over and people, are, people still watch BET or Black Entertainment Thankfully. for teenagers, you know, for teenagers. And Thankfully. they're putting in all of this garbage on there. Right. And... You think it's a black owned company and it's right. really not. It, or it's just like here in Moreno Valley, California, we have Popeye's chicken mm -hmm. owned by his. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing because it's owned by Hispanic people or whatever. Like you said, we mm -hmm. faithfully go to that business right. no matter how bad the service is. Right. Yeah. And it's really is because we're just preconditioned right. to, to 
I guess I can use the word hate to mm-hmm. hate each other and to hate on each other. Okay. You know, it's like because I think we feel if I give them a dollar, that's going to mean they're going to get rich and I'm not going to get right. rich. So I'm not going to help them do that. And so we find ways to, you know, to justify not to support that person. Mm. And we, we, I mean, we just we, we, we have to change the way we think. And so I thought about the sister who I saw on Facebook, you know, she's saying how people laugh at her and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I personally know people who live in, you know, these big old houses. houses. Huge. Yes. But yet, and I'm not saying as you would say, Ray Ray and Pookie and them come in and tear your shit up. Mm-hmm. I ain't talking about Which that kind do. of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about families who are um, wanting to work toward the goal of building something. Why do we need to live in all these big old houses? Because and, and I'm not saying nothing that's not that doesn't work. We know that um, most other races practice that. Asian, Hispanics, Jewish people, they all Arabs, they all do it. They all live in one house, mm-hmm. working toward the goal of getting another house, starting this business and that business, and the rest is history. Right. And so then we as black people. We can uh, we stay being the consumers mm-hmm. instead of producers because we can't even live under the same roof without thinking, well, shit, I can't have them come stay with me. Right. I don't want people to be thinking I'm just, you know, I, I can't afford my shit. And- right. <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, I, I want people to also remember this. If, if you look at the statistics in government, mm-hmm. Asians participation in government, city, municipal, whatever, is less than three percent. Yeah, I mean, why because do they, they care? don't need to. Why do they care? Right, they have their own. I mean, yeah. only in America will you go to a country and you can put up your native language, and it's okay. You, try Every that shit in another country. You go to mm-hmm. there's a Chinatown, Chinatown Korea Town, right? And, Sa- Little Saigon, all, all of that. that. You know, and, in their native language, right? And then here we and are, and they bring their own banks, right? And. So it's like pff, Bank of America keep that, right? And, and I'm not hating on them to do that. I'm just saying if they can do it. Why can't we do it? And if we had an economic, and the reason why Asians don't participate in government, they have an economic base That's that they it. don't need to. That's it. We don't need the government for yeah. Now they, you know, of course, you know, they do get loans and stuff. No, no. When I say government, no, no, is, I know what you yeah. mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not saying they yeah. don't abstain. Yeah. But if they didn't get a loan, they got this whole federation, uh-huh. you know, of people who pulled their money together. Okay, what is it you're mm-hmm. asking? Because the, the book that mm-hmm. I read, The Hidden uh, Secrets of Oriental Wealth, they talked about that, mm-hmm. how they have pulled all their money together. And so if so-and-so wants to start a corner store, okay, yeah, we mm-hmm. got the money. Like we'll a credit give union. it to you. Right. Mm-hmm. Get the business started. And then you start putting it back. And then we'll continue to build all right. this. And in the meantime, do this. Commercial. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I understand you, you're, you're hiring it. No, 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 family business. No, hire. No, hire. No, 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 family business. But that is still within the realms of practicing group economics. Exactly. That's how it is done. Exactly. And I don't, I'm not, listen, I'm not mad at no, you. No, I'm not either. For doing that. You mm-hmm. know what? Uh, yes, we do get black dollars. However, uh, yeah, we're only hiring our people. I mean, that's how you do mm-hmm. it. That's how they're able to sustain as a community. And I was also um, researching uh, Dr. Claude Anderson, some of the things that he was saying, he was saying that black people are even a community. We are, in essence, not, a neighborhood to where we just live in the same area. We don't even know, know each other. We don't right, even talk to each other. Because a community means a group of people working together, together conducively, and we're not doing that. D, stop waking people up. Well, it's stop true. waking them up. And so, <laughs> in order for us to be a community, we have to start practicing grouping economics. And first of all, we got to start liking each other again. Stop trying to find ways of you know, well, I need to figure out why I don't like them, you know, or why I'm hating. Like, I, I keep going back to the young lady I saw on Facebook. It's like, I believe her when people laugh at her. Yeah. Oh, she living at home with her mama. You know, um, and, gee, oh, what do I tell you all the time? My mom is 67 years old. I can't wait till she to, moves to come back to California. Yeah, but to, but why? to me, why is that a crime? Why is that a stigma? Well, I think it's just something that's new in our, it's, you know, and I'm saying new within the last 30 years. Where it's like, okay, no, because we raise up, you know, 18, get the hell. No, again, because we used to do that. Right. That's what I'm saying. Uh, But these women that the government says, and Trump's going to make America great again. uh, (laughs) Oh, get your own. Here, here's a voucher. Keep that nigga out the house. And you raise the kid. And, you know, I mean, we're the, to me, we're the only culture where I can't live here. And don't get me wrong. I have sons. 
they ain't gonna live up up in my house if they're not doing something to better themselves. Oh, no, you be got it school, to be productive, right? Being school right. or having a job, you got period. to be productive. Ain't no like my daddy always say, I'm not gonna help you mm-hmm. do nothing. Nothing. You every because I in my household we practice group economics. I have um, three of my nephews there, mm-hmm. and everybody works and or go to school. Right. Everybody is contributing to the house. At the meantime, we're not spending a bunch of money on mortgage or rent or whatever sure. the case is. We are able to pay a little portion here and mm-hmm. save and do whatever else you need to do. That, that, there, to me, there's no shame in the game. I'm not, I mean, I, I, I actually know people like that who, oh, no, I got to have my own place. I can't have all these people staying with me and all this other stuff. But yet, I personally also know you're struggling. Right. It's like me. I pay 100%. Of everything that I need to sustain, which isn't a big deal, but it's still a hundred percent. Right. But I had a, a significant other, that'd be fifty percent. Right. We can or, go half. Right. Or, or you, you know, you were in the position, you know, because I know your family mm-hmm. lives here and there. Mm-hmm. But to have people come, then that lessens, you know, what you need to pay out, and and also right. increases what you can save, right. And or, or do something in. with, right? Exactly. Right. And so that's what we need to get Start good down. at. And and Dr. Claude Anderson also says. A group's ability to com- uh, to compete is determined by its internal cohesiveness and self interest, mm. and so again, that goes to the fact that we are not operating as a community because we're not cohesive, so mm. we can't compete. We and he also speaks about us not competing. We should be competing vertically, and, mm-hmm. you know, going up and trying to compete uh, as far as class, but we're too busy competing with each other. Right. Okay. And uh, I'm going to uh, jump on top of that mm-hmm. and with each other. Now, do you think, and I've said this a lot of time, and I know you don't like this guy, but Tommy Sotomayor talks about this all the time. Ooh, and yeah, and, and, and you guys don't hear that message. Mm-hmm. There is a problem between the black man and the black woman. What do I tell you when I, whenever I meet women? They got it, their fist balls. Well, yeah, well, they, they got their fist ball, number one. You can't even say good morning. But um, the thing is, I meet these women, and it's almost like a competition with them. Right. I'm not in a competition with you. Right. Well, I think it's what it is is because you, you alluded to this point a minute ago. Mm-hmm. And that black women were sold this false idea of you're independent. Right. You don't need him. For one, when the whole feminism train mm-hmm. came along, the white women drugged the black women with mm-hmm. him. Girl, you need to leave your man too because mm-hmm. he ain't this and he ain't that. Right. In addition to Burn what you bra. said. Mm-hmm. Right. In addition to what you said, the government giving, now they give it to everybody, but black people um, benefit from, you know, section A, mm-hmm. food stamps and all that. A we're lot. quick to take it, basically. Yeah, we're yeah. quick to take it. And so there you go. I don't need you. Mm-hmm. And so we we have this idea. In you our need mind. me for one thing to make those kids. Well, outside yeah, of that. you know, yeah. after that you can go about your business. Right. But and so then when you come along, in our mind we have this false ideology that mm-hmm. well, I don't need him. Mm-hmm. He's here because I want him to be right. here. And so there's that competition. Mm-hmm. You know, what are you gonna do for me that I ain't do for myself? Mm-hmm. And then I'm not saying that's true for all no, women because yeah, there's some all. women who aren't on Section 8 and all mm-hmm. that other stuff. But still, even women who aren't on Section 8, some of them, we do have that. I, I don't need you for right. that. If you hear, you hear because I want you to be here. So there is that competition. Right. Or, you know, or put it like this. I, I've been retired for five years. Haven't worked a day since 2012. Mm-hmm. Right. Since I retired. Uh, I meet these women. Well, you got to get a job, too. Like, you know, you could go to Walmart. Why? It, what, what, what is in their mind that makes them think that? I mean, and here's the sad thing, everybody. And I'm not trying to put my business out there, whatever. Some of these women I'm making, I make more sitting on my butt in a month than they would have to do 40 hours a week, you know, for the whole month. Right. I make more than them just doing nothing. And and I personally know you, so I know that even that you're not working. And now when you say you're not working, it's not that you, you're unemployed per se. Yeah, you no. just retired. I just retired. You have all your ducks in a row. Yeah, I checked but, out of the matrix, but I'm not saying I wouldn't work. The thing well, is... Now, you know, listen, I would prefer you not that it's my business. You yeah. never work. Right. Because no, no, no. it's not like you're not, yeah. it's not like you're sitting at home doing nothing. Right. You just... Mm-hmm, chilling. I do a lot of... I do a lot of... the studio. Right, right. Well, I do a lot of Jerry Springer... Uh, <laughs> Um, Judge Maybelline, you know, so you're out in the community, you're, yeah. you know, you're making a difference. You're trying mm-hmm. to anyway. So you're a very active individual. Well, well, uh, my, my thing is this case anybody's watching that wants to hire me. It, <laughs> it's not <laughs> that I won't please. work. Yeah. You know, it's not that I won't work. Yeah. Everybody has a price. I'm not going to short sell myself and put myself in danger overseas doing something, whatever. I know what I'm worth. So right. if you don't meet that price. I'm not going to come out of retirement. Well, I mean, and then why you. mess up your peace of mind? Just sure. to, I mean, I talk to you about it all the time. Mm-hmm. Hell, there are some days when I'm like, yeah, be like, life probably would be easier financially if I had a nine to five. But then I think about, yeah. damn, I'm going to be stuck in traffic six hours a day. Right. Then I'm going to be up under somebody's desk. And, and you got to be here. 
Yeah. But can I go to the bathroom? Can I go on vacation? Yes. No, sister. You know, I mean, not sister. Uh, but, you know, yeah. Mary such and such has been here for 20 years and she mm-hmm. has seniority. You can't go. Right. So, you, yeah. So you got to work on the holiday. So as far as a woman thinking you need to have a job but, to be know, a man. Right. Like, but, but that competition, like, well, I'm working. You need to work. Wait a minute. I, I've already, this is what I'm bringing to the table. Like, motherfucker, you come home every day, you got a roof over your head, right. you got food to eat, you got a car, you got right. all the amenities, and then somewhere, well, I'm fighting, what else do you need? And don't get me wrong, if you're going to go to Winco, okay, we can't afford the Starbucks bag, but you can get the Winco bag, <laughs> a coffee, you know what I mean? It's all the same. I, yeah, I mean. It's all the same. You know, I don't buy name brand. Right. That's all I'm saying, you know, but. But that's also in, in working to, um with uh, group economics, like yeah. my dad says, he says, you know. When, when are we going to have uh, my father-in-law on the show? Oh, God. He, we'll be here all day because he got <laughs> a lot to well, say. Well, the thing is, like I said, we can go remote. I got to yeah. record the screen. <laughs> he be like, you going to put me on that YouTube? Everything's YouTube. <laughs> Everything's YouTube. <laughs> But he that's also, a wise man. I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. That man is well, very, very wise. But he says nowadays, and this is how you, um, this is not practicing group mm-hmm. economics. He says some women, uh, you know, he said, well, some men actually will bring in a spoonful of money and you got some women who will shovel it out the back door. Damn. You know, here this man is busting his hump, mm-hmm. trying to make ends meet, bring home the bacon. And here you are. At the mall, you're buying yeah. all these shoes. Bags. Or you're dating another dude. And, <laughs> um, no, I, you know, and I'm saying that because I, I saw a show where uh, the Robert Irvine show, and the girl had her mom there. Her mother was putting her in check. Yeah. She had a good man, and, uh, you know, they, they, they thought they were coming there to, yeah. you know, get kicked out of the house. Come to find out, the mother overheard the daughter in an affair with some other dude. Uh. And she put the daughter in check, but she had a good dude. And because they had a few disagreements, she's going to go do something like that. And that's what the mother, exactly what the right. mother said. You got a brother over here providing everything you need. To go and trick off with somebody who ain't about nothing. All because you're getting your way in this instance. And just, you know, but, you know, and, and the brother was very smart. He loved her. So he said, we'll work it out. But it was like, you did this unnecessarily. Right. When, you know, uh, it was a terrible thing. But. but yeah, I mean, to that point, in order for group economics to work, we have to get along with each other. Mm. We have to stop, like you said, competing, slitting each other's throats. And we've got to be willing to sacrifice. That's, 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 that's the key. That's the key. That's the key. That's um, the key. Honey, I know you like your hair and stuff like that. We can't afford the weave. Let's let's go with the short hair. Uh, the nails, we can't do that right. Let's do that every other month. Or You know what I mean? Right. I, I know you want to look like Beyonce, right. but if we just save these chips yeah. for a little while longer, yeah. we can go buy all that right. shit. Right. You're always complaining about we don't go on vacation. This is why. Right. Because you stay your ass at the mall. Right. Little Jimmy doesn't need $300 Jordans. Right. I work for a living. I can't afford to. Look. I got a hole in the, in the, in the middle. You see what I'm Right. So, uh... The biggest thing is sacrifice and right. saying, where do you want to be five years down the road? What's your action plan? Right. And and that's, and that's the thing that where I was going to get to mm-hmm. also in order for that to work. We do need to get together and say, OK, what are our gifts, our talents? What mm-hmm. can we all bring to the table collectively in order to it start with a family first? Mm-hmm. It's hard to practice group economics with the whole neighborhood if we ain't practicing group economics with ourselves. With ourselves you yeah. know, and so if you're black and you own the business. You need to ask yourself, do I have some family member working here? Right. Or do I have somebody else's family member working here and they're but, taking that money home to their community? But wait a minute, that, that's discrimination. You, you know, you have to hire, you know, da, 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 so many people. No, you don't. And you don't. You don't. You, you don't have to do that. Now, there's some corporation that, you know, prefer that's to corporations. have a corporation. Right. But as far as if we having this mom and pop business, it's mom and pop for a reason. Back in the day when mom and pop business came up, it was mom and pop, the kids, right. and everybody else was all, working. All now. my dry cleaners, it's all a family owned business. No. Nope. Oh, yeah, you got that thing? Good, good seeing you. Good seeing you. Right. Uh, are you hiring? Ah, uh, unfortunately, no, we family business. We don't have any none. Yeah, and then, then and they're going to be unapologetic about that. Now, okay. however, mm-hmm. if we have those businesses in our neighborhoods, mm-hmm. they should at least try to hire people from the neighborhood. Because we, listen, I, I've seen this a lot. We talk about this about sure. the, uh, the liquor store. I've seen a lot of black people start to say, you know what? We're tired of being silly. Mm-hmm. And so if you're not going to hire people from the neighborhood or at least try to give back instead of taking these bags fools of money to your neighborhood and mm-hmm. they coming back every day, then we're going to shut you down. We are going to stop yeah. coming here and making it possible for you to sit your arrogant self in our neighborhood and treat us mm-hmm. badly. But that's our fault mm-hmm. because if we were to practice group economics, we could save our money. And as um, there's this one campaign going around saying buy back the black. We could buy back the neighborhood 
as we used to have and open up all of these businesses that are suitable to us. We need to start gentrifying the businesses in our community. Absolutely. Otherwise, we're just going to be moved up out of there, which is what's um, going on. And I don't want to take away from the thing, but that, but that gives a, uh, a great thing. My uh, cousin in Ontario, California... Mm-hmm. Uh, she works for the LA Sheriff's Department. Mm-hmm. Okay, Brittany. You know okay, Brittany. I know Brittany. Um, you know she put it on Facebook, whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you know. And I'm not. I mean, I'm just using it as an example. Yeah. Uh, she was given notice by her management company that the, you know they won't renew her lease. Uh, as far as her job? No, no, no. Her lease. Her, her rent, management her rent company. Yeah, her, for okay. her rent. Oh, got it. Gentrification. They're moving us oh, out. Yeah. Absolutely. And they can do that legally. Yeah. You know, which was a shock to her because right. she's like, wait a minute, wait, you know, what's going on? Because uh, once you're in, they can only raise your uh, rent 3% or something like right. that at the high, right. whatever deal is. So they figured, hey, we're going to get you people out and we can get bigger and better rent. But that's what the, that's the purpose of it. Because why? Why is that? Because who holds most of the wealth? Right. It's the people who are moving you out. Right. They own the wealth. Right. And so right. when you own the wealth, you can dictate to everybody else. Right. Okay, get your ass either, out of here. Yeah, either you're going to pay this or you're... Or are you going to leave and we're going to wait to your here? lease. We're going to wait to your lease. Mm-hmm. We, either we can renegotiate right. and you pay our higher rate. Right. Or by but, but the thing, once you're there, I have to, no matter, matter of fact, I think, I think how it works is uh, I have to get you out. Right. Before I can raise the rent. Because if, oh, yeah. if I renegotiate, I can't. Especially it, it, under, if there. you're under lease. Yeah, I can't yeah. raise the rent on you right. if you're under lease. Right. But yeah. So the, they have the money and they can make the rules. Right. That's how it works. And so mm-hmm. we talk about how much money we have in the black community. We have 1.4 or $3 tr- trillion. trillion dollars. Dollars. So if we would pull that together, then we could start making some of the rules. It's really that simple. But first, we got to stop the hate, right. the crab mentality. Like I found myself within the last couple of months really seeking out and using black businesses. The, the lotion that I have on. I buy it from a girl. Um, she makes it at home. And I this is my second time ordering it from her. I love it. Um, a friend of mine, he has um, legally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I like to say legally. Yes, because you yeah. know, people are like, well, is he allowed to do that? Yeah. He has set up um, shop in, at his home to, in, uh, and got a license and stuff, a business license to sell, you know, sold, sure, sugar, time, detergent. He's a black owned business. So that's I'm going to go instead of going to Walmart. Uh, uh, can I ask you something just real quick? I know this is mm-hmm. a dumb question, but there really is no dumb question. No dumb question. Uh, if it's an African business, mm-hmm. which I go to, I get a lot of my lotions you know, yeah. from Africa and stuff mm-hmm. like that, you know, because because we are uh, hybrids of Africans. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you consider that our community? Because in their community, they practice group economics. Okay, that the, doesn't include the us. The op word was mm-hmm. there. Right. That's what you okay. said there. Right. there. And so while they are black and I mm-hmm. listen, I'm not saying no shade to mm-hmm. the other African people of the planet. Love y'all. However, black people in America, see Africans are like a, a, a lot of them. I don't want to say yeah. most, but a lot of them won't even mess with us. Right. They're embarrassed by us. Yes. They won't, they, you know, they'll take our money, but they hardly even claim us. They talk mm-hmm. bad about us. Yeah, now, I'm not it, saying some of and, it is And deserved. they keep in their own community. And, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, y'all, y'all the niggas over there, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and, we, and we, we're we not. We don't understand all this free education mm-hmm. and you Negroes ain't taking advantage. Right. And so, the, and that's pretty much their attitude. Mm-hmm. And so I would say, I'm not trying to be yeah. a separatist or, you know, us and them type thing, but we have to get it together as black people in America. We have to get our stuff together because we are at the bottom of the totem pole of everything in society Mm -hmm. and we continuously complain about how nobody's doing this for us we can't do this and oh what about us and the president and all listen we have the power to change it around if we really work toward it and want it to do you think that's going to happen and i mean in your opinion do you think that's going to happen and is going to happen fairly soon because the way things are going with the antichrist running around uh <laughs> it's going to be a free-for-all seriously. well i i do see um some things taking place i see well and maybe you know and the people i associate mm-hmm. with i see people waking up and like i said i don't like to say that i'm woke i like to say that i'm waking mm-hmm. up because you're always learning something new um, I, I do see people starting to get it because at this point, like you said, with the Antichrist, who is Trump, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. he, him and his policies are really forcing black people into, I guess, a hole. Mm-hmm. Is it a bad thing? I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, so sometimes you got to take a couple steps backwards mm-hmm. before you can take a couple steps forward. Trump is really reminding the Negro of who we are. We are to them, mm-hmm. not to us, but who we are to them. Well, it's also reminding us that, hey. 
Nobody's going to save me, so I got to save myself. Well, that, which is what everybody else does. Right. Everybody else is not waiting, mm-hmm. you know, uh, for Trump and anybody else to save them. They're like, listen, okay, we got all this money. This is what we need to do, mm-hmm. you know, and, and this is how we're going to be successful. We cannot depend. Like when I hear the, about the taxes and oh my, I don't even get mad about that kind of stuff. Because not Obamacare, I can't yeah. get mad about it. Listen, I'm going to eat right. Right. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Um <laughs> You know, which goes back to what you said about the group economics in, in the mm-hmm. beginning as well. Um, when a recession hit, mm-hmm. I mean, this is like the third recession in my lifetime right. that I can remember. And who's and in and my who's community, fall. right? And in my community, with the last recession, there were a lot of people, except the bougie niggas mm-hmm. that couldn't afford. Why would you come out of uh, Compton and you work at Taco Bell and want a three hundred thousand dollar house here in California and you lost that house? That didn't right. make any sense. But the real people that you know were. They didn't even know there was a recession because right. nothing for them changed, especially if you're taking Section 8. Right. They don't know nothing changed. And I talked to somebody the other day about how uh, zero wealth that we have or, mm-hmm. you know, we're not making any strides right. to where we're just we're just there. Well, and we're also to the point of and me and you talk about mm-hmm. this a lot. Um, a lot of times with people, um, not just in our community, but just people in general, when it comes to taxes, mm-hmm. they're like, listen. I'm going to work this year, (laughs) but I ain't going to work a lot because I need to be able to get all my income tax money back during the end. Which is a bad way to think. Right. Even with this whole tax thing, it's like, oh my God, they're raising taxes. What are we going to do? Make more motherfucking money. Yes. Go work. Um, Make some more money. I love having to write a check to the United States government. That because it means you're making money. I'm making a lot of money. But see, people are so... They're so backwards in their mm-hmm. thinking. Oh my God, I got to pay all these taxes. Well, if you were, you know, you have the ingenuity about you, mm-hmm. which God has not shortchanged any of us to where we were meant to be, to live in lack. Mm-hmm. And so, but we have this mindset. Oh my God, they, they, they. they. Somebody's going to save me. Yeah, we're going to give them all this control over the quality of life we have instead of saying, okay, well, damn, shit, it's not like I need to go make me so more money. Well, and, and another problem I think we have in our community in the recent 30 years is the fact that we don't have an entrepreneurial spirit. Well, actually, the younger kids. Well, the younger kids don't. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and they say in general, just not even sp- speak, speaking of race, but in nowadays, a first generation millionaire rarely makes a second because they do rob children yeah. of the, the struggle. Not saying that you need to get out there yeah. and struggle, but the hard work as to what it took, you know. Like our kids right yeah, now. Yeah. You know? They just give them here. Right. Because grandma stepped in, grandpa stepped Here's in. Here's Ferrari. And, right. Right. I didn't have to do anything for it. Right. I'm still a freshman in college and I'm driving it for, you know, that kind yeah, of you stuff. You know, it's kind of funny. Uh, one of my um, military mentors, mm-hmm. his name is um, uh, Kevin Colin. He was in the Air Force, went from enlisted to mm-hmm. officer, which inspired me. So I, I look at him as somebody who I really inspired me. Mm-hmm. Beautiful wife. Dark skin sister. Oh, gorgeous. Chocolate. Um, he, he put a uh, picture up and his grandchild, I don't know if it's a girl or boy, mm-hmm. uh, had a car parked in his den. And he said, he said, you know, it was kind of a cute caption. He's like, he goes, look at the privilege, right? He goes, how, you know, like, how dare they just park anywhere? Right. So I wrote to him. I said, yeah, I blame the grandparents for spoiling them. Which goes to what you're saying. Yeah. You know, the kid just feels, I'll just park here. Right. (laughs) You know, and it it was a tight car. It wasn't like a big car. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, we, we do. We have to start teaching our children, you know, just really just changing the mind frame of, I need somebody to do something for me. Well, what what I think is a problem too, and not you know not just our kids and our mm-hmm. grandchildren. Mm-hmm. The problem is they think that okay, I'm going to be a stripper. Okay, you can be a stripper all you got, but most strippers are taking their money, uh, investing in themselves, all this weave and living, and then at the Kiss end, and ass. yeah, and then at 36 <laughs> years old, they have nothing to show for it. Uh, our young boys, I want to be a rapper. Uh, da, da, and they, I'm in the studio. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But mm-hmm. there's no hit records. There's nothing really going on. So they're losing 20, 30 years of uh, entrepreneurship. I mean, if you're going to get in the music industry, get into publishing. Right. Write the songs. And, you know, that's where the money's at. Right. Um, if you're going to be a stripper, uh, yeah, I don't know what field that can go to. But I'm just saying, these are things <laughs> that our kids are being put in their mind to aspire to, which means there's no structure of owning a business. We, yeah, we we just really have to get out of that mindset of taking the path of least resistance. Thank you. We, we uh, not not that, again, not just us, because I don't want to seem like we're talking bad about you know our people. But we are and, but we, we're last. Being, but we're being honest. Yeah, we're we are last. And so we have to get out of the mind frame of if it's hard, I don't want to do it. 
That's exactly, I tell my son all the time. He goes, well, dad, why did you, you know, do this and become a, you know, and I said, well, number one, I was stupid. I didn't listen to my parents and I didn't go to college like I was supposed to. So I had to enlist in the military, spent eight years turning a wrench in all kinds of weather and heat and taking the shit that I had to take. Then when I finally wised up, then I went there and, and I said, you know, and I said, well, I've become a pilot and I wasn't worried about if I didn't make it. Right. I just wanted to see. Yeah, it is hard. Right. But if I made it, great. That's the thing. And but, I challenge myself. But yeah, look at the society and the times that we live in. Hell, mm-hmm. we talked about this before, too. When we had to do a book report, you went to the library. Library, right. Now it's. And you're still bringing home F's. Socrates said, okay. Yeah. And you're still you know, bringing home Fs. That's right. what I don't understand. But so what I'm saying, the point that I'm making mm-hmm. is everything is so at the fingertips. Mm-hmm. Everything is so easy. Right. And then when it comes to something um, that's a bit difficult, it's like, well, like, yeah, yeah. I don't want to do it. Wanna it's do too it. hard. It's too and hard. It hurts to struggle. Yeah. You know, I we always, give up. I always tell my son, do it because it's hard. Do it because it's hard. And I put this up on my page the other day. Mm-hmm. Your excuses, someone else will make their reason. Exactly. And they'll be successful. Exactly. It's exactly. all about perspective how you think about things you mm-hmm. know i'm not saying and listen i'll be lying to you and saying that life is easy and oh gosh everything just came to me easy yeah. most people who are successful will tell you shit i failed a bunch of times before i got yep. it right yep absolutely mm-hmm. absolutely and, and, and you know i mean we can all come from that right. you know so i mean when high school i don't remember you driving driving a car I didn't have a car. I didn't have I didn't a car either. until after I got mm-hmm. out of high school. Right. I mm-hmm. t- so I was stationed at March. I was walking for six months to and from work. And, you know, people see me in the rain. They'd be like, oh, man, you want to ride? And I would never take a ride. They thought I was crazy <laughs> because I'm just getting drenched you know, as I'm yeah. walking. But when I was walking, it motivated me to like, no, I'm going to get my own car. Fuck this. I mean, I was mad. Right. And it just turned, I was saving every penny, dime, uh, working a part-time job. I mean, I was determined. I got my little piece of car. I was the happiest motherfucker on this earth. Right. And, and it's funny because we were talking about that before we started the show. Like, you know, these kids um, can't even walk to school now. I'd be up the street and we're like, man, man. we used to walk Three, a four. couple country miles <laughs> right. to school and back. And then look, and, then be, and be guilted by our parents who, who who walked two or three times more than we did. Right. Okay. It ain't that far, girl. You come on home, shoot it. It ain't that far. And I mean, the guy that you feel to get your umbrella when it was raining. Right. Right, and get it because you know California un- unpredictable weather. Yeah, I mean, my mom, God rest her soul, you know, she mm-hmm. might come give me then this big ass chance that she might not. Right, right. You know, <laughs> you know, you know. But that what that didn't make her a bad person. Just no. li- you, listen, walk hard home. knocks, walk home, hard knocks, exactly. I will tell you what, though, we was in shape. Yes, exactly. Okay, thank you. We was in shape did you, walking home. Yeah, did you read the report? They said almost sixty percent of all children by the time they become. Uh, 18 or I think 25 or whatever it was mm-hmm. to become adults are going to be clinically obese. Well, a lot of them are that now. Yeah, but they're saying it's going to be way mm-hmm. more. It's going to be epidemic. And you know what? It's normal. It's, 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 mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's normal as far as the right thing, mm-hmm. but it's normalizing that, oh, they just big bone, well, you know, whatever the case is. I mean, we talk about mm-hmm. when people go to, we go to Winco, mm-hmm. and for you guys that don't know, Winco is just, you know, you probably have Winco where you're at, it's yeah. grocery chain. Grocery chain, yeah. Especially during this time of the month, you'll see baskets of just processed garbage ramen sodium and you're like uh, you're gonna feed your family that mm -hmm. in addition to having all these health problems and then needing to go get some obamacare and it's just like a vicious cycle that Mm -hmm. is in our hands to break yeah and and it's funny because like people look at me i'm 510 and i'm 152 pounds and people would say i'm very lean oh he's skinny I'm 30 pounds from my maximum and I'm 30 pounds from my minimum. I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Right where you're supposed to be. But like you said, everybody, it's normal now to be right. obese. It's, it's just normal. normal to be over. I mean, you know, guys that are my age, some of these guys, I'd be like, right. Who are you again? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't yeah. even look like themselves. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it you're right. We, we need to start doing that. And, and, and it's, and it's not going to get any better until we do there is no magic, and I say this pill, no, you know, savior is going to Congress say, is not going to pass any legislation to help no us, even though, even though they do that for all, everybody else. But you know why they do it for everybody else? Because those people are key players in, you know. They have an economic they have base. It, so we need to cater to And people. they're buying their politicians. Exactly. And that's what Dr. Claude Anderson talks about. If we were practicing group economics, we would be able to buy into Politics. Successful black leadership. John Connors. 
I'm going to retire, but I want you to vote for my son. Is what that what he said? Yes. Yes. To take his seat. This ain't a monarchy. Well, a lot of them treat it that way. I though. know. And that's yeah. bullshit. And I mean, this dude is almost 90. And you listen. Our parents age. Even if you didn't get accused mm-hmm. of the sexual harassment and all this other stuff. Dude, I don't you believe better it. be 90. Why would yeah. you? That, to me, that seems like a stressful yeah. job. I, I don't believe in professional politicians. I just don't believe in it. I believe uh, there should be term limits in Congress. And certain senators, I think a senator should uh, serve no more than 20 years. I think a uh, uh, congressman should uh, serve no more than 10 years. I mean, just sitting in there for life. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. And, and so. Applying the old and, strategies. And people say, well, he, he needs experience. But then again, you're dealing with people, Orrin Hatch, uh, senator from Utah. He was like, there was an argument with him and the Southern Democrat. And he was like, well, I came up, you know, this, this, that. That was in the 1940s. <laughs> You could you could do that back then. Right. You can't do that yeah, now. Yeah, we're in the new millennium right. now, so we need to you know bring some new new right. life to, to, to the body. Your life experience is nothing to what the uh, life experience is but today. You, you hit the nail on the head. It's my right. life experience, right. and you need to apply <laughs> yeah. it to your life. Right. right, and that's the way they think. I mean, right. even with the taxes and the mm-hmm. whole nine, it's what we deem right. is best for you. But a lot of people think that what we're going through right now mm-hmm. is all about race. A lot of it is, but it's mostly about class. Yeah. I impress upon people to read the Communist have, Manifesto. Have read nots. it. Have and that's have what nots. it talks about. It's classism. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing it right now. Like you say, the us or them versus us. Mm-hmm. Us have with have the nots. 1%. We're going to tell the rest of you how to live your life. And if that 1% doesn't start throwing us a bone, just like the serfs in Russia... There's going to be a massive revolution that's going to overthrow them. That's what the Communist Manifesto talks about. And that's about. exactly what happened. Revolution. That's exactly what happened. At the while, it's saying people, if they call it the machine, they're mm-hmm. going to rise up against mm-hmm. the machine and start saying, okay, no more. You Literally, we're starving now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we have nowhere to go. We're homeless. Mm-hmm. And you guys are all up there with all this wealth. Money. Okay, mm-hmm. so you know what? It's one percent of you. And it's 99%, 99% of us. And we're going to come kick your ass. Exactly. And, and, you know, and the funny thing is, Pastor Don show, we were, uh, did we talk about that on the show? I think or before the show. Mm-hmm. And I was telling him, that's exactly what's going to happen. I said, if they don't start distributing, trickle economics doesn't work. But, right. the, but here we are again. And I said, what's going to happen is a person like me or, you know, a have not mm-hmm. is going to walk into your house. Pastor Don has a big house. Right. He's, he was a former businessman. Mm-hmm. But I told him, I said, that's what's going to happen. People have... If, if the president's above the law, then law doesn't mean anything to anybody. And I'm just going to walk into your house and take what I want. And, you know, it's funny because years ago I had this conversation with this girl who was very oblivious to just everything. And she's like, well, I'll just get an alarm. I'm like, are you crazy? Do you think an alarm system is going to stop hungry people from beating your door in? And then how can you get an alarm system when to make the county budget and the city budgets, they're cutting the police forces? Yeah, right. Well, yeah, hey, who going to answer the other side yeah, of that alarm? Right. Oh, she's got ADP. We're not going to yeah, go there. Gonna go over there. Our stomachs are touching our backbones now. Right, right. We ain't going to go get her pantry. Yeah, at the best, you're going to get, uh, <laughs> when somebody breaks into your house, you're going to look at your phone and go, damn, they, they found the safe. Right, okay. <laughs> found the, right, so, <laughs> listen, it's about waking up. Waking up, waking and up. Uh, and that's really uh, a good thing. And we're going to go into our second hour. You guys, don't forget, uh, D has a show on Sundays at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. The views are going up. Uh, she's talking about some real stuff there, a lot of good stuff going on. And uh, it's on YouTube in case you miss it. It's uh, Go to News from Edgemont. It's archived there. And she also has her own uh, YouTube channel, uh, Demetra K, the Demetra K Show. Check it out. And she does Love in the Skin I'm In as well as some other shows. And we talk about this stuff because... We care. We care. Okay. And, <laughs> and, and we black. Right. And we don't want you to sit around and say, well, I never heard that. Right. It's been said. And you guys have noticed too, most of the stuff we talk about is very repetitious. It is. So. It is. Because it keeps up over and right. over and over again. So we're going to talk about that again in the second hour. But the second hour, we're going to talk about a good friend of mine. She's a comedian. And she was on the uh, Facebook about men who... Pass her by. They don't pass me by. And you know, I, I, I sent her a message on Twitter and stuff like that. You know, she's fine and stuff. But um, yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Let's talk about Let's it. Let's talk it. about it because this is loving the skin I'm in, and that's what we're here to do to love our skin and see what the hell's going on between black men and black women. What's, right, what's happening? Now. So, see you guys in the second hour. <laughs> 